So we've come to the conclusion of our study called The Two Trees. We're looking at uh, Genesis chapter 2. And I want to just kind of sum everything up here. In our, in our church, uh, with our kids, we've taught them some catechism questions. And we taught them some of these questions. What covenant did God make with Adam? The answer? Covenant of works. What was, the, what was Adam bound to do? By the covenant of works, to obey God perfectly. What did God promise in the covenant of works? To reward Adam with life if he obeyed him. What did God threaten in the covenant of, of works? To punish Adam with death if he disobeyed. That's fairly simple to understand. But the ramifications of this covenant are what we live with today. For the next question is, did, God, did Adam keep the covenant of works? And of course, the answer is no. So his disobedience of God's simple command led to his death and the death of all the generations that would come after him. But then, thankfully, God did not stop making covenants. For he made a covenant that said that Jesus would take upon himself the sin of his people. Jesus would die to remove the debt caused by that sin. And instead of being clothed in guilt, God's people would be clothed with the righteousness of Christ. This covenant of grace was made. This covenant was kept, and all those that have repented of their sin and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ are those that the, are the recipients of the promised benefits of this covenant. Welcome to APD Today. Let's take a look at the question. All right, so let's look at X 13.2. It says, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. This is a great question, and it really made me think, did the Holy Spirit audibly speak here, or was the Holy Spirit doing something else? How did he make his desire known to these Christians? Did he use other means than just audibly speaking? Well, from the text, it's hard to argue for any.